going back to when humans first started forming tribes and communities, one of the worst punishments that could be handed out to a member of that community was exile. It was worse than death because exile meant certain death, but it would come slowly and it would come with fear and loneliness. Divorce is a form of exile. Men are subjected to this exile and the impact it has is far greater than anything the woman who hands out this sentence understands. And that's what I want to talk about today. I'm going to generalize here because that's the only way to approach the subject. Generally speaking, when a man makes a commitment, it's a very serious affair. This is not something that men do without giving an awful lot of thought and without understanding the full depth of the decision they're making. This commitment is one usually made with the intention of it lasting forever. I know that just about every man that I've ever met who's been through a marriage and a divorce has felt deeply betrayed by the divorce because they felt like when they made that commitment it really was a till death do us part kind of thing it was not you know until unhappiness strikes it makes us all regret the decision it was a uh, I'm in this all the way and so when a woman files for divorce without really good cause. And unhappiness is not a good cause. I mean, if, if a man is abusing you or if the man's an alcoholic or a drug addict or he's driving you into bankruptcy because of his gambling habit, you know, I can give you a, uh, a pass on that. But if you're just unhappy because your life isn't going the way that you wanted it to and that your fairy tale vision of your life isn't meeting your standards and you suddenly decide that you're going to hold your man responsible for it or you're in some way going to take out your disappointment on him by divorcing him, then I'm afraid I have very little sympathy for you at all. In fact, I would suggest that you are the problem 100%. What happens to a man when he is rejected by his wife is much more profound than I think most men are willing to let on. And the impact of it, not just on that man, but um, all the people that surround him and maybe even on society as a whole, is much more meaningful than I think we're giving full credit for. The vast majority of divorces do not occur because um, one party or the other is committing adultery or is an alcoholic or a drug addict or is you know, gambling away the family's fortune. The vast majority of divorces these days are initiated by women primarily because they are unhappy with something in their lives and they are using their marriage as a scapegoat for their lack of happiness. In my own case, I have seen that very, very, very clearly. Um, my ex-wife first started claiming that she was unhappy after our first daughter was born and I detailed that in one of my other videos. Um, at about year seven or eight, the unhappiness chance started coming up again. And then after year 10 or 11, they became much more frequent. I, you know, when I think about what standard are we using for happiness? Because this woman was living in a extremely valuable upscale house. She had financial resources at her disposal. She was, um, not necessarily having to work. She could work if she wanted to or not if she didn't want to. She had lovely children who were healthy and, and vibrant. She had a husband who loved her very, very much and was willing to do almost anything for her and supported her in every way possible. Never raised my voice, no drinking, no drugs, no alcohol. I mean, 
She had a perfect, perfect life in every way, shape, and form. Our neighborhood was absolutely the best neighborhood in our town. You know, the, t the mayor and all the politicians would come to our neighborhood on the 4th of July, and the fire department would roll their damn fire truck right down the middle of our street, and our neighborhood had fewer than 100 houses. This was not a huge neighborhood. It was a beautiful place to live. It was as close to paradise as you can expect to achieve in an upper middle class lifestyle. And yet she was unhappy. She could not ever provide me with an explanation as to why she was unhappy. And I've asked her about it many, many times since she left. And all she could say was she experienced a great deal of anxiety. And, you know, I, I don't know where that would have stemmed from. You know, I really don't. Because um, she had nothing to be anxious about. There was no threat to her in any way at all. Um, her lack of self-soothing, I don't know, her lack of ability to manage that, her lack of ability to talk about it, I have no idea. I have no idea. But in any event, I think this is much more common than, um, than any other outcomes. I think that the vast majority of women just experience this letdown. You know, there's this climax, you know, with the wedding and the marriage and the children, and then it just slowly becomes less and less of a fairy tale because real life kicks in. Things happen, you have to deal with them when they come up. Children misbehave sometimes. You know, um, children get sick, there are bills to be paid, there are, you know, life just happens. And just because you're married and living a wonderful life doesn't mean you're not gonna have problems. And maybe that's the perception, they think that they're not gonna have any problems. And I don't know what it's like for your guys' ex-wives, but with my ex-wife, her life has been miserable since we split. It's been far worse than what it was before. She has called me crying on many, many, many occasions, extremely upset about the state of her life and the decisions that she has made. So maybe this is a video for women who may be considering divorce. The grass really isn't any greener. You know, you're gonna have to take responsibility for your own experience at some point. And claiming that you're unhappy in a marriage really is not a good excuse. You need to have something more than that, you know? because you were at least 50% responsible for whatever it is that's happening in this marriage. And if you wanna make it better, then you're gonna to have to do something about it. You're gonna to have to actually be proactive and you're gonna to have to work at it. Because I can tell you, after marriage, things do not get any better. You're not gonna find that there is some, you know, guy on a white horse willing to sweep you up and take you away because that is not going to happen. In fact, your life is going to become much more challenging in many more ways than you can even imagine right now. So when it comes to divorce, it really is a far more impactful experience for men than most people understand. That, um, that rejection, that exile from the family, from the, from the relationship, um, makes a man question everything. So when a man is presented with his wife's request for a divorce, it shatters his worldview at the deepest level. So it's not just what's happening right now, the experience that he's having right in this moment, but it shatters everything that he believed about himself leading up to this moment. Because most times men are unaware that there's a problem, or a lot of times they're, they don't realize it has reached a place where divorce is on the table. And we like to think, as men, that we make decisions after giving them a lot of profound, rational thought. And so before we offer a commitment, even though we might be caught up in the emotions of romantic love in that moment, we like to believe that we have made a decision rationally, that we've chosen this person, this woman, uh, to spend the rest of our lives with, and we psychologically have to go through that process of committing ourselves to that marriage, to this relationship, to better and worse. You know, we really do take it in that deeply. That's why men make really great soldiers, because when we swear an oath, we mean it, we swear an oath. And if we swear an oath to a person, like we do in a marriage, 
that oath we take very seriously. Not all men. I know there are some guys out there that aren't like that, but I think the vast majority of men fall into that category. And so when the woman, when the wife comes and says she's not happy and she wants a divorce, it doesn't make any sense. It's literally a betrayal. It's a stab in the back. It's your best friend, the person who knows you better than anyone else in the world, the person that you've given more to than anyone else in the world, the person that you've invested in emotionally, psychologically, and financially more than any other human being, more than anyone you ever thought you would, stabs you in the back and basically says, I'm not happy. And because of that, they're going to blame the man, they're going to blame you for their unhappiness. And you are now responsible. And that literally shatters everything that man has believed about himself up until that point. Because he believed that he was making a good decision back then. So then you fast forward a couple years, you're out of the marriage, you're divorced. It's really hard to imagine getting back into dating again because you don't trust yourself anymore. Because you, you committed everything to this last girl, this last woman, and she bailed on you. So now you're wondering, do I even have the ability to make good decisions when it comes to this issue in my life? Maybe it's better that I just opt out altogether. And I understand why a lot of guys would be going their own way because, yeah, it's a kick in the nuts. There's just no doubt about it. And nobody wants to get kicked in the nuts twice. I mean, once you've been kicked once, you've had it. Like, okay, I know what that's about. You don't need to line me up for that one again. I'm going to take my nuts and leave. I'm not playing this game anymore. And then adding insult to injury, the court system gets involved and they grant this unlimited alimony for an indefinite period of time to this woman who is just unhappy, who didn't put enough into this marriage, who gets this lottery ticket cashed in, and she may get the kids too. How on earth is that a just justice system? I don't understand that. Now, I can see, like, if you leave a job, if I've been with a company for, you know, 10 or 20 years, and they're going to move on, and they're going to, you know, let me go, they're going to have a layoff, we'll call it, um, they owe me some severance. I'm okay with severance, like maybe a year or two, you know, let her get back on her feet. You know, when I left my job, they gave me some severance. They gave me a year's severance. I'd been there for 20 plus years, 25 years. I got a year's severance. And that was, I thought, a relatively fair settlement. And I think that if you've been with a woman for 20 years, maybe a year's severance, maybe two years' severance. But that's it, max. And as far as child custody goes, there is no reason in the world why any woman or any person should have full custody unless the other parent is um, completely unfit. I mean, I'm talking about an alcoholic, a drug addict, a, you know, a, a criminal on some level. And then those issues should be readdressed from time to time to grant, as soon as possible, parental rights to that parent. There's no reason why a woman should have 100% custody indefinitely of their children. It should always be a 50-50 split. And there should be no child support going back and forth. It should be you're paying 50%, I'm paying 50%. Plain and simple, you know, split expenses. Um, yeah, the idea that a woman would walk away with a retirement income for the rest of her life and get child support and custody of the children from a man who has worked his ass off his entire life to support this woman and these children to be rejected and exiled from his own family just seems like inhumane treatment. So it's no wonder why men don't want to get married. So I implore you women to take a look at this from the man's perspective. Because I know there's a lot of women out there who delayed marriage or who were perhaps um, considering trying to get back into marriage after being divorced for some period of time. Why would a man enter into this agreement? What are you bringing to the table that has that kind of value? Because the risk of pain and financial ruin is just so high. And the benefit that you're bringing to this relationship 
really is just not, not comparable in most cases. So there needs to be some changes to our culture and our legal system that does away with this endless alimony and these child custody agreements that grant women custody majority of the time. It needs to be a 50-50 split with child custody and alimony should be just enough money for you to get on your feet, get a job and start your own life. It should not be an endless income. All right, you guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And if you know someone who's going through some difficult times and may need to hear some uh, comforting words, please send them this video. I'll see you in the next one. Remember, stay healthy, and if you can, stay single.